In this video, I'd like to talk about the math question of the day for Sunday, June 18th, 2023. And with this example problem, we need to determine if this series converges or diverges. We have this infinite sum here, and we need to see if it approaches some real value, or if we add more and more terms that it increases without bound, it diverges. So a question like this will show up in a Calculus 2 class when studying sequences and series. And at this point, go ahead and pause the video, see if you can work through this on your own. And when you're ready, unpause the video and we can go through this together. Now, assuming that you have attempted the problem, Let's start working through this. And with determining whether or not series converge or diverge, we have a variety of tests that we can use. Now, if your series has an exponent raised to the nth power or something like that, then what we could consider using is the root test. And let me just paste in what the root test is. Let's assume that we have some series, a sub n, or summing up this sequence, a sub n. So let me paste that in. And we can define this limit L such that we'll let n approach infinity and we'll look at this sequence here, this a sub n, we'll take its absolute value and then we'll take the nth root of that. And of course, we could rewrite it as the absolute value of a sub n to the 1 over n power. If this limit L is less than 1, then we can say that it converges. If L is greater than 1, then we can say that it diverges. But if L is equal to 1, basically it doesn't give us any useful information. So this test will really only work if we get an L value that's less than one or bigger than one. So to apply this, we'll look at our term a sub n, and that's just this expression here raised to the two n power. And we'll take its absolute value and raise it to the one over n power and determine what the value for L would be. So let's write this out. L would be this limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of our term here, or our sequence, 3n plus 1 over 4 minus 2n, and we're raising all of this to the 2n power. And we can put our 1 over n on the inside of the absolute value. We We'll raise all of this to the 1 over n power and then close that absolute value. And since we have an exponent to an exponent, we will multiply these and the n's will cancel out. And that's why I mentioned that when you have your sequence here, this term in your series raised to something like the nth power, then this root test is often helpful because we can cancel out that exponent. So Let's make a little bit of room and we can actually evaluate this limit here. L would be the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of this expression. And like I said, the n's will cancel out since we'll multiply these together. We have an n in the numerator and in the denominator and n over n is just one. So we have three n plus one over four minus two n and we're squaring that. Now we can actually multiply this out and then evaluate that limit. So let's just rewrite our limit here as n goes to infinity and we'll square this numerator and we could use the formula for a perfect square. A plus B squared is really just A squared plus two AB plus B squared. You can just rewrite this twice and then multiply it out with distribution. So for this numerator, we square the first term, we have nine n squared. Then we multiply the two terms together and then double it. Three n times one is just three n, doubled is six n. And then we square the last one. So that would be plus one. And then we do the same for the bottom term. We square the first one, that is 16. 
Then we multiply them together and double it. So that's minus 8n, but doubled would be minus 16n. And then we square the last term. So we get plus 4n squared. And notice that we have a quadratic in both the numerator and the denominator. And we want to take the limit as n goes to infinity. So with these rational expressions, we can really just compare the coefficients on the highest power terms, this 9 over 4. But we could evaluate, evaluate this more algebraically by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by 1 over n squared, and that will cancel out the quadratic terms. And that way, the limit will be simpler to actually evaluate. So we can rewrite all of this. L is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of this expression, but now we're distributing this 1 over n squared to the top and bottom. We would get 9 plus 6 over n plus 1 over n squared, all divided by 16 over n squared minus 16 over n plus 4. And as we let n approach infinity, for the expressions with some power of n in the denominator, these terms will all go to zero since the denominator is getting bigger and bigger, but the numerator is fixed. So the overall fraction will get smaller and smaller. These will all approach zero in the limit. So this would simplify to the absolute value of 9 over 4, but that of course is just 9 fourths. And since our limit, 9 fourths, is bigger than 1, we know that this series diverges based on the root test. So our final answer is that this series here diverges.